Hello, and welcome to Quantum Analyst, a channel focused on quantum computing stock investing. IONQ has been embroiled in a shareholder lawsuit since May 2022. A small group of investors alleged that IONQ made false and misleading statements, which caused their losses. They are seeking compensation for their losses from IONQ. The case is still in its early stage and may last for years. In today's video, I'm going to tell you about some key details of this lawsuit, its recent developments, and what it means for IONQ. I will also share my opinion on whether this is a major trouble for IONQ or just a minor annoyance. Stay tuned. IONQ is embroiled in a shareholder lawsuit. According to its 10Q filed on August 10, 2023, IONQ and some of its officers and directors are involved in a shareholder lawsuit. The case was filed by a stockholder in the U.S. District Court of Maryland in May 2022. Regarding its impacts, IONQ states, given the uncertainty of litigation, the preliminary stage of the case, and the legal standards that must be met for, among other things, class certification and success on the merits, the company cannot reasonably estimate the possible loss or range of loss, if any, that may result from the associated suit. Coming next, I will walk you through what this lawsuit is about, and the timeline of the lawsuit. On May 31, 2022, an investor, Michael Leacock, who purchased shares of IONQ, filed a lawsuit alleging violations of federal securities laws by IONQ. The plaintiff alleged that between March 30, 2021 and May 2, 2022, IONQ failed to disclose to investors that IONQ had not yet developed a 32-qubit quantum computer. The company's 11-qubit quantum computer suffered from significant error rates, rendering it useless. IONQ's quantum computer is not sufficiently reliable to be accessible despite being available through major cloud providers. A significant portion of IONQ's revenue was derived from improper round-tripping transactions with related parties. Overall, the lawsuit claims that IONQ made false and misleading statements about its quantum technology, its business prospects, and its financial performance in connection with its merger with a special-purpose acquisition company, Spock, called DMY Technology Group 3, Inc. The lawsuit accuses IONQ of violating the Securities Exchange Act of 1934 and the Securities Act of 1933. It also asserts claims for breach of fiduciary duty, unjust enrichment, and corporate waste against the individual defendants. The plaintiff cited the Scorpion short selling report twice. The Scorpion report is a 183 page document that was published on May 3, 2022. The report alleges that IONQ made false and misleading statements about its technology and business prospects. The full report is available online. The plaintiff argued that the Scorpion report is credible evidence that IONQ's management misled investors. The plaintiff provided his transactions in IONQ. The data shows that he has been buying IONQ shares shortly after IONQ went public. He used four accounts and made a total of 16 trades. The first trade was made on October 13, 2021. The last trade was made on January 4, 2022. In total, he bought 4,366 shares for $77,073, which is an average cost of $17.65 per share. Based on the closing price of the day he filed the complaint, which is $5.75 per share as of May 31, 2023, his paper loss is $51,956, or 67.4%. I tried to graph the investor's transaction history in a chart so that you can get a feel for it. The investor mostly bought into IONQ shares during the first two months after IONQ's public listing. At that time, the US stock market was in a state of euphoria. IONQ reached its all-time high of $35.90 per share on November 18, 2021, eight weeks after its public listing. After that, IONQ's share price entered an epic decline mode in the coming months and years. According to the complaint, the investor requests the court for the following. Number 1. To determine that the lawsuit is a class action lawsuit. This means that it will represent a group of people who have been harmed by the same wrongdoing. Number two, 
to award compensatory damages to the investor and the other class members for the losses they have suffered. This includes anyone who bought IONQ securities between March 30, 2021 and May 2, 2022, when the truth about IONQ's business was revealed by a report from Scorpion Capital, a short-selling research firm. Number 3, to award the investor and the class members their reasonable costs and expenses, such as the cost of hiring lawyers and experts. Number 4, to grant any other relief that the court deems just and proper. This could include, for example, an order requiring the defendants to stop their wrongdoing or an order to return money to the investors. Number 5, to demand a trial by jury. This means that the investor wants the case to be decided by a jury of their peers, rather than by a judge. To summarize, the key request is to cover his paper losses. Here are some notable developments so far. Number 1, in June 2022, another class action complaint was filed. Fisher v. IONQ. Number 2, in November 2022, the court consolidated the Leacock litigation and Fisher litigation. Number 3, in February 2023, the IONQ defendants and the additional defendants each filed a motion to dismiss the consolidated amended complaint. Number 4, in March 2023, the lead plaintiffs filed their omnibus opposition to the motions to dismiss. Number 5, in April 2023, the IONQ defendants and the additional defendants each filed a reply in support of the motions to dismiss. As of now, a hearing on the motions to dismiss has not been scheduled yet. This lawsuit has been ongoing for about a year. Here are my thoughts on how it could impact IONQ going forward. Number 1, it will definitely be a distraction to management. As both the CEO, CFO and a few board members are listed as defendants, this will distract them from their day-to-day -day work. The lawsuit can last for years, which could further impact their ability to focus on the business. Number 2, it will negatively affect IONQ's reputation in business. Media coverage of this class action will bring unfavorable publicity, damaging the company's credibility, and harming the company's ability to attract customers and partners. Number 3, financial uncertainty and potential compensation. If the plaintiff wins the lawsuit, IONQ may be forced to pay a significant amount of money. So, to the final point, in terms of the degree of seriousness for IONQ, is it a trouble or an annoyance? Full disclaimer, I am not a law expert, nor do I have any law background. The following is just my intuitive sense after reading the Scorpion short selling report and the shareholder lawsuit complaint. My sense is that it is more of an annoyance. Number 1, the lawsuit is not totally without merit, but it is not a strong case either. I didn't see very convincing evidence to prove that IONQ misled investors either on purpose or to a large extent. So even if the judge ruled that IONQ was at fault in certain aspects, I don't think it would be severe. Number 2, the lawsuit cited the Scorpion short selling report, which is reasonably biased. The short seller is betting that IONQ's stock price will go down so that they can profit, so they have a financial incentive to find negative information about IONQ. Number 3, the lawsuit is filed by a small group of shareholders, most of whom likely bought into the hype and suffered from the severe decline. This group is relatively small, compared to the whole shareholder base. We haven't seen them get support from other major shareholders. Number 4, the lawsuit is still in its early stages, so it is possible that the case will be dismissed by the court. Number 5, there is also the possibility that the plaintiff will withdraw the case, for a number of reasons, such as, they may realize it is hard to win, they may not be able to afford the case, or IONQ's stock price rising will change their mind. Number 6, recently, we have seen more and more institutional investors increasing their positions in IONQ. While this does not necessarily mean that they support IONQ for anything that happened in the past, it is still a vote of confidence in IONQ's credibility. Overall, I prefer to think that the shareholder lawsuit is more of an annoyance than a trouble. That concludes today's video. Please leave any comments or feedback below. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Your support is greatly appreciated and will help me continue creating content. Thank you.